Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The righteous of the right, the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. We are peace. None of us live to himself or yourself. And none of us die to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we, we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Amen. Amen. We continue the seven by saying, Praise be him 502. Grab the who are kept this same. Praise be him 502. Uh, disappeared. 
and the sea vanished, and I saw the old city. The new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. From God prepared and ready like a bride dressed to meet our husband. I heard a loud voice speaking from the ground. Now God's home is with human beings. He will leave with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and he will be there, their God. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more grief or crying or pain. The old things have disappeared. Then the one who sits on the throne said, and now I make all things new. And he said to me, write this because these words are true and can be trusted. And he said, it is done. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. To anyone who is thirsty, I'll give the right to drink from the spring of the water of life without pain for it. Those who win the victory will receive these for me. I'll be their God and they will be my children. But cowards, preachers, perverts, murderers, and the immoral who practice magic, those who worship idols and all lies, the place for them is a little burning with fire and sulfur, which is the second thing. This is the word of the Lord. I Say, <laughs> Can you know man a trim? Now the out and he won a swan. Say, she may I know many now for sure. Now I'll say, Joe, if you say, and send you room, not in a parry. Now I'll catch them, or catch them say, when we may alpha and omega. If you can see any and the yellow, may I make it in quite a situation, then we can see your better. Will be allowed to come again on a quack, then on a quack. We are a kitchen cream, no, Benya Yenum Eddy, Namayeno, when you are put on, now on also I am ye or back. Nami, hm, now a hoof for me one hour, one year in the name, a chinjig for any a good for any in one hour for any a good for any a bosom son for any a profound in a Benya will check for what it is. I dear I, Jack, any sort of air and no one will be no one. Or the entire year, I just have the moon. And it's so free. And no one will be no one. And I just sing. I sing. Amen.
Patricia Duarte de Castro. Kingdom. 
due to the unsettled political climate in Ghana at that time. The question with the unconstitutional acts of military takeovers and coup d'etats, particularly the disturbing political development in 1980. The decision to relocate, which was a difficult one, was partly influenced by the advice he received from his younger brother, who was a soldier in the Ghana Armed Forces. The family arrived at their new destination in the United Kingdom with nothing but a few suitcases filled with memories and a heart full of aspirations. Life was tough, and so he had to work harder and put in much effort to secure a home in Popra, London G14. As times went by, he took up charity work involving helping people seeking asylum in the United Kingdom. His charity organization, Global Welfare and Legal Advisory Center, became an advisory center for clients seeking to remain in the United Kingdom and assisting such persons with all their immigration and legal matters. The student had a life that he had envisaged for them. And his wife also worked tirelessly to ensure the home was in order. All his children had embraced their new home, contributing to society and making a difference in the lives of others. He had become a testimony to the powers of God. Hard work, determination, and the unwavering love of a family home. In view of the foregoing, the story of the family became an inspiration to all. It was a story that would remind everyone that no matter where they come from, with perseverance, hard work, and prayer, all obstacles shall be surmounted for a better future. Fast forward. His reward to getting closer to God led him to join the Christian Church of Ghana, Ghana, sorry, on the 12th July 1990. He was part of the group of Akins who visited the late Reverend Kudu Amanin to encourage him to start the peace-speaking congregation for Peruvian in London. After this, Amani had met with the Ekwakun Ekwakun Fikru to start Kids Feeding Church. Wofaya had been part of the journey from Kennington Christ Church and Upton Chapel, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, St. Peter's Anglican Church, and even a visitor location at some point and eventually became part of the Lee Green where he interacted with the people and participated in many church activities. In August 1997, he stated the inclusion of the first minister of the Christian Church of Ghana, Reverend Dr. John Azuma, in our congregation, which brought rapid growth to the church. He also served as a presbyter for seven years under Reverend Amelie in Kennedy and was appointed to serve as a Harvest Committee Chairperson under the same administration. Wafaya again served as an intermarine committee member of the Blazer Foundation and a member of the Men's Fellowship. On 19th August, my dear father was called to attend by his neighbor. Now, the debate started sober. Now the battle days pass. Now upon the father's shore land the voyager at last. Father, in thy gracious teaching, leave me now the servant of Amen. Thank you.
Seattle. I had a voice from heaven saying, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Daddy, I cry out as I affectionately called you. My moments of joy turned into deep sorrow and sadness with the news of your passing. I carry with me a heavy heart, a heart that cannot be comforted nor pacified. I feel my entire world has crashed as I look at your lifeless body lying before me at this moment. I cry out, Daddy, you were not only a darling husband to me, but also my best friend and confidant. In fact, you were my love, my life, my everything. You were an extraordinary gentleman, an epitome of true love, an embodiment of kindness, a jewel of inestimable value, and a beloved husband, father, and grandfather. It has been very hard for me, the children and grandchildren, to come to terms with news of your passing these past few weeks. Daddy, you were the very essence of compassion, a symbol of selfless humanity who transcended diversities and differences. How do I summarize my whole 55 plus year experience with you into a page? Certainly, no amount of words can be enough to describe the moments and experiences we shared together in the past 55 years and over. Daddy, in your rule book of life, you always put God first, and you taught all of us to do the same. You led by example, and left us with a legacy of unconditional love, patience, honesty, integrity and kindness. Thank you for your wonderful sense of humour and being there for our family in your very special ways. Thank you for choosing me as your life partner and blessing our marriage with six amazing children and grandchildren. You've been a mighty blessing to us and we are very honoured to have been part of your life's journey. We are equally grateful to God for this. I will treasure our beautiful memories and I will miss your wonderful personality. I will miss your warm heart. I will miss your love. And I will miss our beautiful conversation. But I can smile because there will always be a piece of you here on earth. I can smile because all our beautiful memories are kept in my heart forever. These memories of you, which I shall continue to cherish and celebrate, will serve as my strength. I may be shattered with a broken heart, but I take consolation in the life that you lived a life that touched and transformed many lives, and more significantly, a life that cannot be celebrated enough. I am also comforted and find solace in the fact that you are resting peacefully in the bosom of God. I pray out, Nancy Yi, Demi Pedri, may the good Lord keep you safe till we meet again.
for his family and ensured his children had the guidance they needed. We are grateful to God for all he did for us. We couldn't have asked for a better dad. We thank God for the amazing and loving father he blessed us with. Our dad was the biggest fan. Our dad was the biggest fan and greatest role model. He was our rock in times of adversity and our anchor when life threw its funny curves at us. He almost always has solutions to our challenges. Whenever we could, whenever we called on him, no words can fully describe the immense influence he had on our lives. It's thanks to his invaluable support and guidance that we become the successful individuals we are today. He wasn't afraid to be different or have an opinion, view which is still self-confident and exposed us to different perspectives of life. He was not just a father to his biological children, but to all we crossed but to all who crossed his path. Nobody left his presence disappointed. In simple terms, Daddy, you are an extraordinary father and your place in our hearts can never be filled. While we thanked Mum and other family members for looking after you so well, it's us who should thank you for the profound impact you have had on our lives. We deeply miss you for the rest of our lives. You taught us kindness and how to treat everyone as equals, regardless of their background. We learned to respect others while being true to ourselves, and above all, to treat others as we would expect to be treated. We all have families now, and if we can pass on our wisdom to them is as you did to us, they too should grow up to be grandchildren you would be proud of in Jesus' mighty name. We were an incredibly loving father, a teacher, a friend, a kind-hearted, generous man. You are also a pillar of strength for our community. Our family hopes, our family hopes this memorial page will endure us, will endure as a collection of the various ways you touched people's lives. Our father believed in the power of connection and cherished friendship as much as family. As we, mem as we remember and honour his legacy, let us, also, let us also use this platform to bring together all those lives he touched. May we find comfort, strength in one another during the difficult times and continue to cherish the, mem continue to cherish the memories of a wonderful man who will always hold a special place in our hearts. <laughs> To everyone who shares beloved memories of photos of my father, of our father, it warms our hearts to know that he will be remembered by so many. Once again, Daddy, also known, also known as Schoolboy, you will be deeply missed. Rest peacefully in the bosom of the Lord until we meet again on the last day of the selection. Grandchildren, grandchildren.
chapter 21, verses 3 to 4. And I heard a voice from the front saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. On behalf of our grandma, parents, and the entire family, we, the grandchildren of the late Samuel Nananyao Tabon Pochiano, thank you for being here today to move with us and also celebrate life for our grandfather. Grandpa, as we affectionately called him, is a, a life lived filled with joy and happiness. Whenever we think of him, remember how humorous, witty, and clever he was. Most of our childhood memories of him are tinged with traces of humor and laughter. He loved to laugh and have fun, and we adored him so much. He was someone people loved to be around. He had a beautiful soul inside and out. He was arguably our biggest inspiration, role model, and supporter. His departure from this earthly life has left us heartbroken, but evidently, he was even more in heaven. Grandpa, we have beautiful memories of you to comfort us for the rest of our lives. Thank you for making our lives beautiful. Enjoy your new home, hey Daddy. You're one of the most courageous people we knew. You embraced life and had a great impact on projects to show for it. You taught us so much in the time we spent with you. You taught us the value of the truest love, which we will carry with us forever. We know that we shouldn't question God because He knows more than we do. But we can't help but ask, why did you leave us? Why? Why? <coughs> Even if we search the entire universe, we are sure that we will never find a grandpa who is loving and caring as you want to us. As your grandchildren, you are a perfect grandfather to us. You were never afraid of the fiercest storms and the biggest dogs. We can only pray for a fraction of the courage you had. You are in our memories now and always. Grandpa, we are grandchildren. We will miss you so many we will miss so many things about you. We will miss all the moments we share together, Grandpa. We miss your infectious smile and sense of humor. We miss your history lessons. We miss the prayer that you can see your mom and your mom and sugar break, sugar, sugar break among other things. Rest in peace, our dear grandfather, aka Jimmy Rogers, and may the good Lord preserve you until we meet again. Even though the same death is inevitable, inevitable, 
I'm so tired of seven. That there's still diversity with its stripes, living pain and pain of its weak. Especially when it claims the life of those who have lived in service to humanity and society at large. Undoubtedly, one such remarkable individual whom they took from us at the expense of the humanity and the society of our beloved big brother and talk. But today we gather to celebrate this life. <coughs> the news of our big brother, Mr. Samoya Tabon Boachiyano, passes hit our family hard, very hard. The family is shocked, and suddenly, by this departure, at least embody, embody the soul and spirit of our family. It is those who love with all their hearts who feel the most pain when they love one like our partner, big brother, Mr. Santo who we affectionately call your father, passes through. He was the first one of the late Mr. and Mrs. Joe Wachi Yaro. Of I was peaceful lover, affable, focused, determined, and hardworking in every aspect of his life. And the family. But I was known for speaking his mind and not hesitating to stand up for what he believed was right. He was a supportive member of the family, always ready to help others <coughs> unconditionally. Of fire stood out with his enduring character. And his general's heart, he was everyone's beloved brother, and would always be. <coughs> dear brother, dear big brother of Fire, we wish you well. Still less because we love you. But it takes solid in knowing that your God loves you even more. May he keep you in this environment until we meet again the rest of this. Tribute to the love someone watch you by the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Trinity Congregation, London. In everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born, to be born, and a time to die. A time to weep, and a time to love. Time to mourn, and a time to doubt. And to discuss a story, two, eight, and four. The home call of our dear father, brother, and a friend, Nana Sama Wachiyaga, has filled the entire Trinity family with great sadness and disappointment. Indeed, when he fell ill, many visited him and prayed for him. When he was declared husband, the agent from Mapakofi, Nihakon, Era through to Papa Abdaku and now Papa Victor Abbey will visit him and his household periodically <coughs> with the Eucharist and pray with him. We expected and hope for him to recover and join us to worship again. Therefore, the news of 
is come to the eternal rest came to us as a surprise. However, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. May his name be praised. Job 1 21. He was called by many names, but most and affectionately called Nanabuachi Yadu. He joined the Trinity Congregation 32 years ago on the 21st July 1991 and has been part of the journey from Kennington, Berkeley, leaving the Peninsula Congregation at some point and eventually to Lee Green. He was deeply committed to God and the Church and demonstrated this commitment through his interaction with people and participation in church activities. He served as a presbyter for seven years and a Reverend Amani in Kennington. At some point, he was again appointed to serve as a Harvest Committee chairperson under the same administration. He also served as an IOC member of the Ebenezer Congregation. He was a member of the Met Fellowship. I recall that at one point in time, when the Ebenezer Congregation was evicted from their former place of worship at Crossways URC, Elfan and Castle. An announcement was made to look for a new place of worship. He single-handedly sought for a place and secured one at Belmonte Methodist Church for the congregation. A place where they worship until they move to their current place of worship. Undeniably, he performed all his obligations with keen interest and as a true Presbyterian and a Christian. The good Christian and the Presbyterian that he was, he did not joke with his type. As a testament to his faith and devotion to God, he paid his tithe regularly and took part in all the church's activity until his illness and age and strength gave up on him. Nanabuache Iano was cheerful giver, friendly and approachable. He was also fearless, brave and strong-willed person. He did not hesitate to say his peace of mind, regardless of the individual's personalities or stature. He will put you right and when he has to, and he did this with no hesitation whatsoever. Indeed, he was a respectable gentleman and possessed qualities and qualities that was worthy of emulation. Our fellowship will not be the same without him. However, we are grateful to have worship with him during his time on earth. Nana Bwachi Yadon, your affection enlightened everywhere you have been. Your words were stringent but full of wisdom. Many have benefited from your wise counseling and friendship and will miss you dearly. Your devotion to God and His work greatly enriched our fellowship. Nana Bachiliano, you were unique and nobody could replace your sweet, affectionate soul. But we take Consolation in the fact that you have gone to a better place and that one day we shall meet again in our Father's house. Nana Bachiliano, you have indeed fought the good fight. You have surely run your race. You have truly kept the faith. And now may the good Lord give you the crown of righteousness. Rest in perfect peace in the bosom of our Lord. Nana Nancy, you, Lord of Amen. Amen.
And he was the one who certified that everything he had created was to be here or here, you know, they are fine. But the human being he created and gave oversight of all creation to him, you know, that human being disobeyed him. Only part or the name Yamani in our share in Sasa or Sheston. He didn't listen to God. I get city and that caused all kinds of things to go wrong in this world. So today you look at this world, all kinds of things are going on. People are killing their fellow human beings. Human beings are killing themselves, committing suicide all over. Wars, unnecessary and senseless wars are going on. What's happening in Ukraine? And what is happening now in Gaza? All of these things are things that should not have happened. That people are cheating their fellow human beings. They look at slavery, the slave trade, and all kinds of things. Human inhumanity to his, his fellow human being. All of these things, if you look at them, you realize that this is not the way God created and certified that everything is good and it's okay. So God Himself said that I'm going to remake it. I'm going to make it a new thing for you. I'm going to cause some kind of renovation. That was the promise God gave. And then he said, the sea will no longer be there. The sea is a symbol of, if you like, chaos. Uh, those of you who watched the television yesterday about the storms and those things going on, you look at the sea and you see the chaos. One people said, really, uh, this is something that is fearful and frightening. So the sea represents chaos, all the challenges we face. The sea in those days when the travel experience you know, was very limited, you look at the sea, the vastness of it, and the expanse of the sea, and you don't know what was beyond. The discovery of America was not because they knew they were going there. It was by accident that they went there because of what they thought. And see, for you or for us and for them in those days, the sea represents some kind of mystery. There are mysterious and very strange creatures in the sea that can devour you. So what? You can't go and come back again. So the sea represents evil, chaos, all the challenges that we face, all the things that we look around and we say, no, this is not good. No. The sea represents that. So it says, I'm going to make a new heaven and a new earth. The sea will no longer be there. That chaotic and dangerous and mysterious things that you see around will not be there again. I'm going to make everything new. And that was the promise God gave to us. And he says, I will be their God. I will be with them. I will dwell amongst them. And that has been the covenant God has made from all the scriptures, from Genesis right to Revelation, you will see God promising that he will live amongst his people. And I said, you don't need anything again. Okay. Like a champion said when he came into power, who did he have me? You know, if you have God, you don't have need for anything again. You have received all that you want to. So I'll be their God and I will make my dwelling in me one better than that. Yeah, better one, yummy. Now, on my name, 
So he will continue to live with us. And that is the perfect and ideal situation we want for our lives. So God himself will be with us. Says I'm the Alpha and Omega. The beginning from the beginning to the end. The completeness, all that you need, no, is in me. And therefore, if you have me, and that is the promise he gave. And he said that those who are going to inherit this, this ideal situation I'm talking about, you know, those people who have overcome the challenge is that we face today. All the problems that are coming to us, no? those who will not give up. Oh, 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 cassette. No, we get me to make you until I tell you. But me, I'm over to me, I'm so more. I'm a poor, a yellow, sound patron, or no, or they are sad. I'm a year come from a seven. So those people who hold on to the very end. Those people who will be able to stand their grounds and say no to evil and yes to the good things that ought to be done. No to evil in spite of the problems that you face. Say, we cannot carry now what money. These are the people. On the you, there you are not there, there, you know. Those people who will be truthful and faithful to God and the things that God wants us to do. Not those people who will cheat and who will do all kinds of things. Things that are not worth mentioning even among people who claim not to know God. These are the people that we inherit. Now, the yellow first states, no, no, see. But those people who are these people who are not doing the things that I want them to do, no, they don't have any portion in this very good situation or very good picture or scenario that I have created. No, they don't belong there. They belong to where punishment has been apportioned to them. No. So, yes, this world is not the ideal place it created for us. That is not the case because but he's coming back. He loves us so much. So he will not want it to continue that way. He is coming to renovate it. He is causing a cosmic re re renovation including the human being, the human being who disobeyed, you know, and caused himself all the, 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 the problems he or she is facing today. You know, I'm going to make everything new. So at the end of time, at the sound of the trumpet, that person who has believed in me will be changed. And no, now, oh, I can't myself, First in Second Corinthians chapter five, or see the one who has believed in him. No, for him the past is gone; everything has become new. So you are acceptance of him and living for him. Celebrity now, I get near or person that person has gone from condemnation into redemption. Some person no. And that is what God is talking about. Going to make all things new. Then, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, so said, This body that we have not has been corrupted. So, this cannot inherit what he is talking about. This body cannot inherit it. So, at the sound of the trumpet, no, we shall all be changed. This mortal and perishable body will be transformed into immortal and imperishable body. And that day, you know, is the day we are all looking for. For those who have given themselves to him, you know, it will be a wonderful day. 
but those who have rebelled and continue to rebel, like in the time of Noah, no old, they get me, we get it, what's happening? People have said it. Oh, look at it, they have said this over and over and over again, thousands of years. Nothing has happened, it's not happening. But they're making merry like the people of Noah and the grace will start falling on us. Look at some of the things that are going on. The storms and the tsunamis and everything. You can realize that some of you see a net, we say, we are saying, just want everything be over. So that is what God is speaking to us about. But those who inherit what I have prepared for them, who will be transformed are the people who are people. We are here this morning, this afternoon, to bid our farewell to a very wonderful person. Somebody who everybody is talking about. I had the discussion of knowing him for a very short time. And the little I experienced from him, uh, some of them have been mentioned, like somebody who will say as it is, the hand is a cell phone. Whether you like it or not, you will say it. Whether you are the governor or you are the servant, they will tell it to you. Mia, say, a baby, a better say, a baby, say, a papa, a better say, a papa, say, a pita, a better say, a pita, a yes, say, a great piano, a shade of that color. He will see his passages. Those who will say the truth and let everybody takes them. Somebody who is prepared to be the only person who will stand here and defend his belief instead of following the gospel. Uh, From the little that I've heard about him and seen, this I hope and believe that the Lord Himself comes him among the people. Our man of Shandia. So that one day, those of us who will be faithful and continue to be faithful to God will go and meet Him in the presence of the God and forever be there. Until God's mourn, like those who once have faith, His faith is carrying Him on. So believe in whom He believed in, that He sacrificed so much that He was prepared to sacrifice His image, His everything. I learned by Saturday everything that he will use in going to church. His shoe and polish, his tie and ring, everything. You know, he believed in somebody in that person is God. The tribute you can pay to him is for you to also look at whom he believed in. And if you find any merit in him, you also accept him. But if you trust him so much and you believe in his judgment so much, then you will want to believe that you will not look at the sick by saying that you want to be coming of God the Father's and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we thank and bless your holy name for calling us this afternoon into your presence here in this chapel to remind us of your intentions, of making everything new, of recreating things so that we can be in the place you have planned for us from the very beginning. We thank you for the life of our Father, and we commit his soul into your hands and pray that you will grant him a resting place, a peaceful place, till we meet him again. Help us, O Lord, to reflect on our lives and think about the things we need to do and the things that we ought to do. Help us to do them to glorify your name. So we we'll also secure our place with you in heaven. This is our prayer, and we are praying through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
we are doing a service to a close by assuming our revenue him A4407 Akuto PA. Revenue him A4407 Akuto PA. After that, Papa will give the closing prayer and benediction. <laughs>
for me
Falling asleep in the Lord are in God's hands, and no torment shall touch them. For blessed are the dead who die in the Lord henceforth. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. And everyone who does hopes purifies himself as he is pure, 
that he may become partaker in the resurrection of the just. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each and every one may receive good or evil according to what he has done in the body. Wherefore, beloved, let us escape from the corruption that is in this world because of passion, and seek the one thing needful, even that good portion which shall not be taken away from us. Let us be like those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes, and purify our souls in obeying the truth and walking in the light. For thus says the Lord to those who are wise, Be faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life. Amen. Amen. 791. <laughs> has pleased Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to call our Father and our brother somewhere, back to himself, and we have commended his soul into his hand. We now commit his body to the ground, and we say, to death, yeah. dust to dust, and ashes to ashes. Uh, for none of us lives unto himself, and none of us dies unto himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. <laughs>
Beloved in the Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord of our calling give you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Oh, 